the tutorial for chapter 6, section 4, Applications of Linear Systems, day number 2. So in this one we're dealing with distance, rate, and time, and we're going to use those concepts to help us find out some situations. So the first thing that we'll see on a lot of these problems deals with this situation, and let's take a look at it. It says, when a plane travels from west to east coast across the United States, the steady west to east winds act as a tailwind. So most of our weather comes from the west and goes towards the east. So you can see that blue line right there represents the wind. So it constantly flows that way. And so this increases the plane's speed relative to the ground speed. So when it's going right on the ground, wind's not really an issue, then it ends up uh, being affected by that wind when it goes from the west to the east, and also from the east to the west. And we'll see that here. When the plane travels from east to west, the wind acts as a headwind. So it's pushing against the plane, making it go slower. This decreases the plane's speed relative to the ground. So here it is. So when we are going with the wind from west to east, we see that the two speeds get added together to make a ground speed. And then we're going from east to west, they work against each other. So the, uh, our speed, when we go ahead and subtract the two amounts, that'll end up being our ground speed. And so let's take a look at this situation. It says that Traveler flies from Charlotte, North Carolina to Los Angeles, California. So from Charlotte to Los Angeles. So we're going to go a little slower because we're going against the wind. So another traveler, at the same time, another traveler flies from Los Angeles to Charlotte. The airspeed of each plane is the same. And so it says the ground speeds are shown below. So here's the ground speeds. And it says what is the airspeed and what is the wind speed. So let's take a look at it. So we'll go ahead and define some variables. And they're actually already defined. We'll use what they've got. Airspeed equals A. Wind speed equals W. And so we'll start off with this one here. We'll say A plus W equals 550. So I know that because it's going with the wind. You can see how the wind's pushing it at its back. It's a tailwind. Where on this other equation, you see how this is the, we'll say, the plane from Los Angeles. Plane from LA. And the next plane, plane from, we'll go with Charlotte, is going to end up being this way, A minus W. So A minus W, because the wind speed, the wind is working against the airspeed of the plane, and that ends up giving us a slower, a slower amount, because we know the two A's are equal, we just don't know what that is, but we know when we go ahead and subtract the wind speed from the airspeed, we end up with 495. When we go ahead and add the two, it makes 550. So we're ready to solve this equation. We can add it together the way it's at right now. So that leaves us with 2A equals 1045. So all we have to do now is divide by 2 and we'll have the airspeed. So it looks like the airspeed's a decimal. 522.5 miles per hour. So we know the airspeed, or the speed of the plane, airspeed equals 522.5 miles per hour. So now we take that value and substitute it back into one of the equations. So we'll do 522.5 plus A, or plus W, equals 550. So when we do that subtraction, we subtract the 522.5 from all sides, we'll get the wind speeds. So the wind speed ends up being 27.5 miles per hour. So we'll write that down to the side here. Wind speed is 27.5 miles per hour. So those are the two answers for that problem. Let's take a look at another type of problem here. It says you will you row upstream at a speed of two miles per hour. So when we're dealing with a river, we have the same sort of situation. See, here's the river, and we've got the current is going in one direction. And the boat, if it's going against the current, then you can see how the boat is going to end up going slower. But if the boat was going with the current, 
the boat would end up going faster because the current is pushing it. So we have the same sort of situation as the wind speed. So you row up, upstream at 2 miles an hour. So And then it says you travel the same distance downstream at 5 miles an hour. What would you... What would be your rowing speed in still water? Still water means without the current. So what's the boat speed is what they're asking for. So that just means boat speed. And then what is the current speed? So let's go ahead and define some variables. I'm going to use R equals the boat's rate in miles per hour. And maybe I'll use C for the currents. rate in the same units, miles per hour. They need to be the same units in order to compare. So we'll set up the equation this way. R, and then since we're going upstream, we're going minus C. Minus C, because again, we went upstream. That's going to slow us down. So let's draw that arrow over here. So that's why it's minus equals 2 miles an hour. Now the other one, though, downstream means we're going to end up adding. So that means plus. Upstream means minus. So it's going to be R plus C equals 5. So when we add these together, the C's cancel out. I'm left with 2R equals 7. So it looks like R is 3.5 when I do that division of 2. So that's miles per hour. And we can go ahead and say boat, boat speed equals 3.5 miles per hour. And so now we're going to take that 3.5 and substitute it back in. So I've got 3.5 and then plus C equals 5. So I'll subtract that 3.5 from all sides. That's going to give me what C is, 1.5 miles per hour. So the current speed is 1.5 miles per hour. So then it asks what happens if your rowing speed is three miles an hour in still water? Current speed is four and a half miles in still uh, four and a half miles per hour. So if that is the case, then we would not be able to make any progress. Actually, we'd end up going backwards. So we can say you'll go backwards. You'll go backwards. if your boat speed is less than the current's speed. So let's take a look at this next one. So with the tailwind, bird flu. Okay, so well, bird is the same thing as going to be the airplane type problem which is the same as the boat problem as well. So at the tailwind, the bird flew at a ground speed of 3 miles an hour. So let's go ahead and define some variables. We'll go with R equals the bird's speed in miles per hour again. And we'll say that we'll go with W equals the wind speed. And this is also in miles per hour. So going with the wind, because it's a tailwind, it's R plus W. So tailwind means plus. So R plus W equals 3. And then it says flying the same path against the same wind, the speed, the ground speed, was only 1.5. So R minus W equals 1.5. So when we add this together, we're in, we end up with 2R equals 4.5. So when we do that division, R is 2.25 miles per hour. So we can say the rate of bird speed, bird speed is 2.25 miles per hour. So we find the rate of the wind. We just have to substitute in. 2.25 plus W is going to be 3. So that tells us the W value, the wind speed, is only 0.75 miles per hour. So we'll say wind speed equals 3 quarters, 0.75 miles per hour. So those are the types of problems you're going to see on tonight's homework.